Hello Arkenians, welcome again. In today's lesson, we'll go through a very important topic that some learners might find it confusing. Even some native speakers might find it confusing as well and might need to be reminded of. So in today's lesson, we'll explain these three things that you see right now in a detailed yet simple way. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that we have for today is a normal letter T which is the second letter of the Arabic alphabet. This is how letter T looks like in its general or independent form. We have already explained it in details in the first course, so I will leave the link for its lesson in the description below so you can check it out. But anyway, letter T looks like that when it comes connected at the beginning of the word. For example, the word tag, tag, which means crown in Arabic. Now notice how the T came connected at the beginning of the word. T also looks like that when it comes connected only to the letter after it. For example, the word katib, katib, which means writer or author in Arabic. Now, the T in this example came connected only to the letter after it, which is letter B. T can also come connected to both letters before and after it, and then the word maktab, maktab, which means office or desk in Arabic. Notice how T in this word came connected to both letter kaf and letter B. Now lastly for letter T at the end, it can either come separated or not connected to the letter before it, as in the word nabat, nabat, which means blunt in Arabic, or it can come connected to the letter before it, as in the word bint, bint, which means girl in Arabic. By the way, this type of teh that we just mentioned right now has another name, and this name is teh maftuha. Teh maftuha. Teh maftuha. And maftuha in Arabic means opened. Opened. So this term best describes this type of teh. Because this type of teh is opened and not closed, that's why it is called the opened teh. Teh maftuha. Teh Maftuha. You will get to understand that more when we get to explain the other type of teh later in the lesson. Now, no matter where you write teh maftuha in a word, or no matter which vowel sign it takes, whether it's dhamma, fatha, or kasra, it will be always pronounced as teh. So it is always pronounced as teh. So teh maftuha has many uses in Arabic. For example, it can be used to indicate singular noun, as in the word bait, bait, which means house in Arabic. Or it can be used for feminine plural nouns, as in the word benet, benet, which means girls in Arabic. It can also be used with verbs as a feminine marker at the end of a verb. For example, the verb rahit, rahit, which means she went in Arabic, which is the past tense of the verb go. Tehim aftuha can also be used as a part of the root of verbs, such as the verb met, met, which means he died, or the verb sakat, sakat, which means he stopped talking. So te in these last examples were a part of the verbs and cannot be removed. And we will get to explain all these cases in details in future lessons when we get to the grammar section and other stuff. So don't worry about it for now. For now, I'm just explaining the uses of te maftuha in general. All right, now let's move on to explain the next section. All right. So the second thing we have for today is letter He, which is the 26th letter of Arabic. We also explained it in details in a previous lesson, so I will leave its link in the description below so you can check it out. But anyway, this is how letter He looks like in its general or independent form. He looks like that when it comes connected like that in the beginning of the word, as in the word Haram, Haram, which means pyramid in Arabic. He can also look like that when it comes in the middle connected only to the letter after it, as in the word Maher, Maher, which means skilled in Arabic. Or it can come connected to both letters before and after it, and in the word Shahr, Shahr, which means months in Arabic. Notice how in this word he came connected to both letter Sheen and letter Ra. He at the end can either come connected to the letter before it, and in the word Thawakeh, Thawakeh, which means fruits in Arabic, or it can come separated, means not connected to the letter before it, and in the word Dawra. Daura, which means cycle in Arabic. Now, same as letter T, no matter where you write letter He in a word, then it will still be pronounced as He. He also have many uses. He can be used as a possessive pronoun attached to the end of nouns to indicate possession. 
For example, the word kitabu, kitabu, which means his book in Arabic. Now the word kitab alone means book in Arabic. And he here is added to indicate that this book belongs to a certain person. He can also be used at the end of verbs to indicate the receiver of a certain action. For example, if I say shakaru, shakaru, which means he thanked him in Arabic. Shakar, shakar means thanked in Arabic. And he here refers to the one who is getting thanked. He can also come attached to the end of prepositions. For example, the preposition on in Arabic means ala. Ala. Now, if we add he to this preposition, then it will be pronounced as Ali. Ali. And he came here attached to the preposition referring to someone or something. Same as they, I'll explain all these cases of he in future lessons when we get to them. So I don't want you to worry about them for now. For now, again, I'm just showing you the different uses of letter he. All right, now let's move on and explain the third part of today. All right, so the third thing that we have for today is called te marbuta. Te marbuta. Marbuta in Arabic means tide. So it's called the tide te. We'll explain why it is called like that in a while. Now, the very important thing about te marbuta is that it only comes at the end of a word. So it never comes in the beginning or in the middle. It only comes at the end of the word. And when it comes at the end, this is how it looks. Either like that, where it is connected to the letter before it, or like that, where it is not connected or separated. Hmm. I know you might be wondering right now about how familiar te marbuta looks like. As it got the same two dots as letter te, and also got the same shape or form as letter he at the end of a word. And that's indeed correct because it got the same characteristics of both letter te and letter he. But why is that? And what's the reason behind that? Well, to understand that, let's take two examples that end with teh marbuta. The first one is the word madrasa, madrasa, which means a school in Arabic. Now notice how when we pronounce this word, we pronounce it with the he sound. So we said madrasa, madrasa, eh, eh. So from this example, we can conclude that teh marbuta at the end can have the same sound as letter he. So that's basically the first reason why teh marbuta takes from the characteristic of letter he. Now let's take another example. Let's take the word shagara, shagara, which means tree in Arabic. Now notice how when we pronounce this word as well, we pronounce it with the he sound. So we said shagara, shagara. Now this case where teh marbuta is pronounced with the he sound only happens when you stop at a word. Like when you pronounce a word that ends with teh marbuta and you just stop at it without continuing to read. Now there is another case where teh marbuta at the end can be pronounced with the teh sound and in the letter teh. And this case happens when you continue to read after a word that has teh marbuta at the end of it. So you are not stopping at the teh marbuta as in the first case. If this is becoming confusing for you, then let's take some examples for more clarity. Let's take the word shagara, shagara that we mentioned earlier, that means a tree in Arabic. Now, if I stop at this word alone, then teh marbuta in this case will be pronounced as shagara, shagara with the he sound. However, if I add another word after the word shagara, then shagara in this word will be pronounced with the teh sound. For instance, if I add the word ilmuz, ilmuz, which means the banana in Arabic, after the word shagara, then shagara in this case will be pronounced as shagarit ilmuz, shagarit ilmuz. Shagaritil moos. And shagaritil moos together means the banana tree. Now notice how in this example, teh marbuta was pronounced as teh because we didn't just stop at the word shagara, but we continued to pronounce another word after it. So it is pronounced as shagaritil moos. Shagaritil moos with the teh sound. Now let's take another example. Let's take the word madrasa, madrasa that we mentioned earlier, which means it's called in Arabic. Now if we stop at this word, all right, then it will be pronounced as madrasa. Madrasa with the he sound. However, if I add the word ilwilad, ilwilad, which means the boys in Arabic, after the word madrasa, then it will be pronounced as madrasit ilwilad, madrasit ilwilad with the teh sound. And madrasit ilwilad together means the boys' school. Now, notice how in this example, teh marbuta was pronounced as teh because we didn't just stop at the word madrasa, but we continue to pronounce another word after it. So it is pronounced as madrasit ilwilad. Madrasit il wilad with the teh sound. And that's the second reason why teh marbuta takes from the characteristic of letter teh as well. So the bottom line out of all of this is that teh marbuta only comes at the end of a word and it can be pronounced with the heh sound if you stop at a word 
or it can be pronounced with the T sound if you continue to read. All right, so there is one more important thing that we need to mention here about Teh Marbuta. So Teh Marbuta is not another separate Arabic letter, no. In fact, Teh Marbuta is just another version of normal letter T that comes at the end of a word, hence why its name starts with T. So as we mentioned before, Teh Marbuta means the tight T. So this type of T is closed and tied, unlike normal letter T, which is opened. So now we understand where the name comes from. Now let's see the use of Teh Marbuta. So Teh Marbuta is used as a feminine marker of proper nouns and adjectives. Almost all proper nouns and adjectives in Arabic that ends with Teh Marbuta are considered feminine. I say almost here because sometimes you might find some Arabic names that end with Teh Marbuta that are still considered masculine. But in most cases, when words end with Teh Marbuta, then they are considered feminine. For example, the word Dhakiya, Dhakiya, which means smart for a woman in Arabic, and the word Nashita, Nashita, which means active for a woman in Arabic. Now these words are considered feminine because Teh Marbuta came attached to these words. And we will get to talk about that more in details in future lessons. All right, so I know there might be some questions coming up in your head right now. And these questions are, how would I know if the word should be written with Teh or Teh Marbuta? Considering that both of them had the same sound in one case as we mentioned before. And how would I know if the word should be written with He or Teh Marbuta considering they can also have the same sound in another case that we mentioned as well. For example, if I give you this sentence, which is Shagarat al-Muz, Shagarat al-Muz that we mentioned earlier. Now in this example, how would I know if the word Shagara should be written with Te or Te Marbuta? Considering that the end of the word Shagara in this example is pronounced with the Te sound. Well, this is exactly the confusing thing for learners that we mentioned in the beginning of the video. It can also be confusing for native speakers themselves and they can misspell words that ends with Teh Marbuta, like writing words with Teh when they are supposed to be written with Teh Marbuta. So how can we clear this confusion and make sure if it's written with Teh or Teh Marbuta? Well, to do that, you can use a very simple method, and this method is called Taskeen. Taskeen. And Taskeen comes from the word Sukun, the no vowel sign that we explained in the second lesson. But as a fast reminder, Sukun is a sign that is placed on top of a letter to make them pronounce it neutrally with no vowels. But how would that let us differentiate between Teh and Teh Marbuta? Well, to understand that, let's go back to the Shagarit al example. Now, the confusion in this sentence is that when I say Shagarit, Shagarit, I don't know if it's Teh or Teh Marbuta. So to figure this out, you need to add Sukun on top of the last letter of the word and pronounce it with Sukun. If it gives you Teh sound with Sukun, then it should be written with letter Teh. However, if it gives you He sound with Sukun, then it should be written with Teh Marbuta. So the word Shagara, Shagara, if I add Sukun on top of the last letter of it, then it will be pronounced as Shagara, Shagara, with the He sound. So in this case, Shagara should be written with Teh Marbuta. Now let's take one more example to make that more clear. If you look at this sentence, which is pronounced as Beit al-Aila, Beit al-Aila, which means the house of the family. Beit means house, Aila, means family in Arabic. Now, how would we know if the word Beit should be written with Teh or Teh Marbuta? Well, to do that, just simply add Sukun on top of the last letter of the word. So if you do that, then this word will be pronounced as Beit, Beit with a Teh sound. So this word should be written with letter Teh. So the bottom line here is that if I'm confused and don't know if the word should be written with Teh or Teh Marbuta, then I should simply just add Sukun on top of the last letter of the word. If the letter is pronounced with He sound, then the word should be written with Teh Marbuta. However, if the letter is pronounced with Teh sound, then the word should be written with letter Teh. So now all what is left is to know how to differentiate between He and Teh Marbuta. And in order to do that, we need first to explain the indefinite articles of Arabic, which we will explain in the next lesson, because I don't want to make this lesson too long for you, so you can focus and absorb the information that been given to you so far in this lesson. So in the next lesson, we will explain the indefinite articles of Arabic and we will differentiate between He and Teh Marbut. All right, so now we can recap this whole lesson in four points. So the first point is that the normal letter Teh that is also known as Teh Maftuha is always pronounced as Teh no matter where you write it in a word or no matter what vowel signs it takes. The second point is that letter He is also pronounced as He no matter where you write it in a word. The third point is that there is another version of normal letter Teh, which is Teh Marbuta, which comes only at the end of a word. And Teh Marbuta is pronounced as He if you stop at a word 
or pronounce it as T if you continue to read. As for the fourth and the last point is that to differentiate between T marbuta and normal letter T, just simply add sukun on top of the last letter of the word. So if the letter is pronounced with He, then the word should be written with T marbuta. However, if the letter is pronounced with T, then the word should be written with letter T. And this makes the end of this lesson for today. I hope you found this lesson easy and helpful. And if you do, then consider subscribing, liking, and sharing it with other people so they can benefit from it. And if you have any questions regarding this lesson, then do not hesitate to ask them right away. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you later in the next Arabic arc.